I'm here as the president of the Open Society Foundations, an organization which bears the scar of many a political battle. We fought for human rights and democracy around the world. We were in Eastern and Central Europe before the fall of the Berlin Wall. We were in apartheid South Africa, engaged in the political change. There hasn't been a fight for social rights around the world, whether it's been LGBTQ, or a woman's right to choice, or migrants, social rights and employment, those of care workers left out of formal economy protections. We've been in the forefront of all these struggles as the world's biggest human rights foundation. We're at a moment where we're reassessing our impact. How can we best protect human rights in the world? And we've realized that alongside the traditional threats, political, social, economic, and corporate that we have addressed, lies a new threat, climate. A threat which falls on victims who are, in a sense, not the source of the issue. The big polluters in the world still have not been hit in their pocketbooks. Indeed, there are subsidies to fossil-based fuels which allow them to continue to often largely unconstrained in their behaviors. But the disproportionate victims are, are those who are in most cases themselves near zero emitters, people who are living marginal existences in slums and barrios where the absence of clean water, the quality of public services is already making their lives highly vulnerable. Together with their counterparts who stayed in an increasingly precarious agricultural existence on ever more marginal lands, it's these groups who bear the impact of other people's emissions. And so as we've looked at the funding allocation of our foundation peers, we've seen disproportionate funds going to mitigation in the global north and inadequate funds going to adaptation in the global south. So while part of our strategy going forward does focus on a very northern issue, how we can support the advocacy efforts in North America, Europe, and hopefully over time, China, to really drive a leveling of the global playing field, a move towards a zero emissions future. That advocacy is something we will continue to support. Beyond that, it is to our colleagues and friends and grantees and those we seek to serve in the developing world that we want to apply the majority of our support in this area of climate. We are working heavily already in the towns of the Amazon to help people organize to address the impact of deforestation on their livelihoods. We're working on building more resilient lives in the Caribbean, a region deeply affected by climate change, where critical sectors of its economy, like tourism, are potentially at risk. We're engaging in South Africa, where a just energy transition from the fossil-based power system of today to a renewables future is one of the great political economy struggles that that nation faces. And with all of these engagements, we have an eye to their wider application across other parts of the global south. We stand with you all in solidarity as a human rights organization which has concluded that climate is at the heart of future fights for rights.